Well, hello and welcome back to another episode of Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority and your host here on the show. And if this is your first time uh, tuning in, let me give you a special welcome. We talk about all things relating to real estate investing. We talk about single family houses, finding deals, raising money for your deals. And if you've been tuning in, you know that I've been having some amazing experts and guests here on the show. And in fact, today, that is another example of, in fact, this guy I was so impressed with, he's back on the show now for the second time. And I'll get him introduced to you in just a moment. But beforehand, I've got a free training for you waiting. It's a masterclass. It's titled, Where to Get the Money Now. And in that masterclass online, free, I reveal the five steps of going from no funding for your deals to literally getting available in the millions of dollars of funding for your real estate deals. And you can go check that out after the show at www.jayconner.com forward slash money podcast. That's jayconner.com forward slash money podcast. Well, my good friend and colleague, Chris Miles is back on the show with me today. He's known as the cash flow expert, and he's also known as an anti-financial advisor. He's a leading authority teaching entrepreneurs and professionals on how to get their money working for them today in a very different and unconventional way. He's uh, an author. Uh, he also is the host of his own podcast show called the Chris Miles Money Show. And he's been featured all over the place. He's been in US News, CNN, Money, uh, EO Fire. And his company is called Money Ripples. And what he does is he gets his clients really fast, life altering financial results. In fact, Chris, his personal clients have increased their cash flow by over $100 million since he started consulting with his clients. So with that, Chris, welcome back to the show. Hey, it's a pleasure to be on, Jay. I love being here. Well, I tell you, I just wanted to have you back, Chris, because your expertise and your topic is just so different and so unconventional you know, it's probably been six months or so since I had you on the show and the podcast audience has really grown a lot over the last six months. So we've got thousands and thousands in our audience that have not met you until today. So of course, Chris, you and I got to know each other in the, the high end mastermind group that we're in together. And of course, I love your heart too. You got a servant's heart. So let's start out this way, Chris, on today's show my lands tell everybody what in the world an anti-financial advisor is is it the person that does the exact opposite of what every financial advisor does but it's what you hoped he would actually do and what <laughs> you is know that <laughs> yeah i mean think about every financial advisor right they're telling you the same old crap all the time save everything spend nothing invest it in mutual funds and hopefully someday if you're lucky you'll make money you'll actually retire right Right. And the truth is, like, I've proven it, it doesn't work. Because I started out being that guy for four years in the early 2000s. And I'll tell you, like, every time I ran the numbers, if I ran real numbers, right? Like, you, have you realized the real rate, rate of return of the stock market's only been 7.5% for the last 30 years, not 10 or 12, right? So when you start foot, yeah. putting in those numbers, you start putting in the fact that there's actually inflation that we're battling, and there's taxes and everything else. The truth is, is that somebody who has a 20-year retirement goal, even just to live a middle-class lifestyle, you got to be saving like $10,000 a month. I mean, seriously, you can't even legally put in that much money into a 401k to do that, right? And that's the thing is that that system is broken and proven not to work. It's never been enough. And so my whole mission, though, even the reason I was able to retire myself twice by the time I was 39, and I'll tell you the whole reason why I'm not fully retired or ever can be retired is because of that mission. Like I've got to help people fix this you know and that's why what you teach jay when you talk about doing alternative investments doing things with real estate or hard money or anything like that oh my goodness like there's so many better things you could be doing where you make more money better cash flow and you could retire in, in many cases like my clients five to ten years from now or less wow that's amazing so that's the traditional model financial yep. advisor of course most financial advisors 
their pay is from their selling of the mutual yeah. funds, et cetera. And so it sounds like you as a financial advisor, you're not selling mutual funds. You're not selling stocks. You're actually nope. consulting with your clients and giving them the magic um, strategies. So, so I'm not a paying client. My audience is not a paying client. But mm -hmm. you got to tease us just a little bit on some of the strategies or a few of the strategies that you do consult with your clients on, well, what other alternatives are there? I mean, how in the world, what can you do to really retire in five or 10 years? Yeah. Well, you know, like I, I look at two things mainly when I consult with my clients, right? Uh, the first thing is I'm looking for money leaks. You know, I'm looking for places where money's going out that it shouldn't be. And I, I don't mean like, living on rice and beans and all that crap. Well, that's, that's just not good, right? Like we want to have a real life here, you know? We want to live, we want to have vegetables with our rice and beans too, you know? So it's not about that. It's more about, hey, are you paying too much in taxes? You know, I got CPAs on my team and we can help find that. You know, are there things you're leaking money like uh, people are paying too much in different insurance premiums or whatever, right? Or, or whatever it might be. Like we try to find the money leaks first and then second, find the, the actual money that you probably don't even realize you have and use that to invest in alternatives, whether it be, like I mentioned, real estate investing, doing things with buying turnkey real estate or investing in different notes or funds where you can get paid consistent actual returns on a regular basis, you know, you know oil and gas. You know, I'll give you an example. Just this morning, I had a guy that emailed me and said, okay, Chris, you know, you asked me this question. Well, here's my answer. And the question I asked him was, he was, he was debating between two investments, right? Now, as a disclaimer, I never tell somebody they should be doing a specific investment. But I'll say, hey, if you do this investment, or I'll connect you with people that have these investments, right? You know, hey, if you do this, here's the outcome. Here's what you're going to make. Here's what the cash flow result will be. Here's how, how the pros and the risks with it, right? And then, and he was debating back and forth. He's like, Chris, I'm between doing oil and gas because this oil investment will give me 100% write off this year. That will help reduce him when he's cashing out his IRA before he's 59 and a half, right? He's like, and then there's real estate. He's like, which one should I do, or should I do both? And and I asked him. I just said, listen. You know, if money were not an issue right now, which it really isn't, right? But it is for him, right? In his mind, it is. I was like, if money really were an issue, where would you actually want to have your money? Because I'll tell you, a lot of people, when they're looking for the right investment, they tend to go with whatever the, pays the best returns. But you don't want to just do that. You want to do something you actually love, regardless of the money, so that when you do become financially independent, when you don't have to work that job or that business anymore, and you work by choice, not by force, right? When you're in that position, you don't want to have something that feels like a, you're just working for a paycheck on investments, right? You don't want these investments to drain you. You want to actually enjoy them. So I asked him, what, which one would you prefer? He said, honestly, Chris, I'd prefer real estate, hands down. I see the tax benefit of the oil investment, but real estate is where I want to come back to. It's like, great. Well, now we've made our decision. Now we just need to find the right deals in that realm and pick the right properties and things like that, you know? And so- you know, that's kind of the thing that, that we look at is, you know, mutual funds, I, I don't like at all. I think they're high risk, low returns, right? Like you take all this risk, you gamble with it, you make very low money. But the truth is people that have become wealthy, things that have actually been proven to work are doing things in this alternative investment space that you and I talk about on our podcast shows. That makes sense. So when we talk about alternative investments, so you mentioned real estate, you mentioned oil and gas. I recall on the last show when I had you on, you had a really unique strategy that involved uh, life insurance. So remind me and tell the audience about that alternative investment strategy and how it works. Yeah, I mean, that, that one, I just use it as, as a replacement of a savings account, right? Because what most people do is they take their money, they save in a savings account, and then they go and invest it, right? I mean, that's pretty typical. They build it up and they build up to enough to either invest in a note or a syndication or into a turnkey property, and then they go and invest it. Now, the money's gone. It's drained from your savings account when you do that. And then when you take the cash flow from those investments, the returns, then you're putting it back and slowly building up that cash again so you can do it, reinvest again, right? Right. Same exact strategy, but I use life insurance instead. Why? Well, even though I got some initial costs, I found ways to lower the cost drastically so it doesn't suck up all your money out of it in those first few years, right? Right. So I use it because one, it's tax free. Two, it's, it's protected from creditors and lawsuits where 
even money in an IRA is not protected from creditors and lawsuits. If they win a lawsuit against you, they can tap in your, for, your IRA and make you cash it out. You know, so home equity is kind of the same thing to a degree, you know, but this they cannot touch. Um, and on top of that, it's liquid, just like a savings account, but I'm making better returns on savings account and it's tax free. So I call it like a supercharged tax free savings account because I'm making more and keep and not paying taxes on that growth. And here's the cool thing. When I do it, I do it like a, a line of credit. Like when you get a home equity line of credit, right? Mm -hmm. you, you take that money and you invest it and you know you've got interest being charged. So you know you got to take that cash flow and pay it towards that investment and then you make the money on the top, right? Um, I always tell people, I said, hey, my goal is when I do an investment, I want the return on that investment to be double whatever my mortgage line of credit payment is, right? Well, if I, I, I can do the same thing with life insurance, but the difference is this. A home equity line of credit, you only pay interest. It pays you nothing, right? You just try to create that arbitrage where you make more money than what it charges you, make a higher right. return than what you're paying on the loan, right? Right. Life insurance, you could do the same thing, do a, a secured line of credit against it where the insurance company gives you a private loan that's not on your credit, no monthly payments required. They just charge you like 5% interest you know, per year. And the cool thing is, is that I can take that money. The, the thing is all that money that's in my account is growing tax-free. I'm earning dividends on all that money in there. So what's happening, it's like having a home equity line of credit that also pays me at the same time. And what ends up happening is if say somebody buys a turnkey property and say their cash on cash returns 10%, right? Right. Well, the cool thing is that this will add at least another 4% on top of it when you use that money from there versus just pulling out of your savings account. So you're making like 14% return instead of just 10. All because that money's making money there and at the same time it's making money with your investment. You're making money in two places at the same time. It, it's brilliant. That is fantastic. I love it. Well, I know you've had you have had and you do have quite a few clients that you consult with in this space. And I love stories. I love stories, Chris. So if you would think of a client that you either currently have or you have had and tell us a story about their background, you know, what kind of space do they come from and yeah. what their experience was and what kind of results they got by following your advice. Yeah, I've got several. You know, for example, um, you know, I have one guy recently where, you know, he's, he's actually a minister, you know, for his church, right? Loves it. Doesn't really want to quit. Not for a while, but he just wanted to know how can I get my money, making more money for me. Right. So now he's, he already loves what he does in the ministry, but he wants to have that option where he can work by choice. Or if something happens, he's still okay. He's still got other streams of income. That was multiple streams of income. Right. Right. And so, yeah, we started looking at his situation. We did like a cash out refinance, figured out what was the best refinance to do use up some of the money that he had for retirement. In some cases, even some retirement money, he's cashing out. He's taking the penalty and the tax hit now because he knows he can make way more than he could just leave it in the stock market, right? Mm -hmm. And what's awesome is that within the next few years, he's actually going to have enough cash flow to replace his income as a minister. You know, and, and he's, he's not being paid cheap. I'll just tell you that. He's not like some of the ministers I've met where they make 30000 a year. This right. guy's making six figures a year as a minister in California, right? Right. But the awesome thing is just get his money, turn it around to actually make money. And he's like, he's super pumped. I mean, he's already doing awesome right now. You know, another guy in Hawaii I've got, uh, he's actually got a business. He's going to be selling in a few years, you know, 60 years old. Get this, him and his wife actually want to retire off of Hawaii back to the mainland on the West Coast <laughs> because they want to be somewhat cheaper, right? But he's like, yeah, the island's good. Maybe we'll keep a vacation home here, but we want to get away. He's right. like, but I'm going to be selling my business soon. What do I do to get out of it? Well, we got him into looking at different investments. We're looking at a lot of turnkey real estate for him. And he's already at the point, he's already cash flowing 6000 a month with some of the resources he's had. Some of it was from home equity, which by the way, his wife was completely against until she realized, hey, $2,000 a month on a home equity line of credit can make us 8000 a month. That's a no-brainer. That's 6000 a month for free, right? Exactly. Um, and they haven't even touched their savings yet. Now they're like, well, now we got the savings. Now we got to move the next phase, right? And he's at the point where by the time he sells his business, he won't even have to sell it because he'll be fine. But uh, that'll just be bonus cash he'll use to invest, you know? Another guy I have, he's a, you know, I have some dentists and stuff. I had a dentist recently where same thing, their goal is 15000 a month. That's their freedom number, as they call it, right? Right. You know, as I was talking to them, I was like, well, let's see what you have. And, you know, between the different resources, I'm like, wait. 
you know, you have an eight year goal to hit 15,000 a month. Honestly, I think you could do it in five or six because right now, I think this year alone, we could probably get your cash flow up about, you know, seven to 8,000 a month to be conservative. I always try to give the conservative number because I'd rather somebody be pleasantly surprised than disappointed, right? Right. But same thing is like, wow, like you got, you're, you're so asset rich, but cash poor. Because when I looked at his, his actual passive income, it was almost nothing. Right. So you got all these assets and they're not paying you. You're working harder for your money than they are for you. Let's reverse that. And, and he's in his 40s. So he wants that time to say, hey, if I could, by the time I'm 50, retire, and my kids, you know, it's about the time that they start hating you when they're teenagers, right? You know, when they don't want, well, I shouldn't say hate you. Maybe they don't want to spend time with you as much anymore because now they have friends and everything. Get that time now. And heck, even if it meant you spent an extra year, maybe you took more time off of work. Maybe you didn't hit that goal in five or six years. Maybe we took six to eight years, which is his goal anyways, but you enjoyed more time with your family now. Isn't that worth it? You know, and that's, that's the kind of thing. I mean, it's not just about the numbers and the money. It's all about really creating that life of freedom, that living that life because you want to, not because you have to, right? That's what I love. I love it. Let's come back to the oil and gas thing. So yeah. what's the oil and gas strategy? Yeah. So, I mean, there's different oil investments. I mean, anything you do with oil, you get a pretty big tax break on. Now, different companies will give you certain tax breaks. One of the companies I have connections with, for example, they'll actually give you the full 100%. So if you invest 100000 into their oil fund, you get a $100,000 write-off on your, off of your income on your taxes, right? Wow. So, uh, which is awesome. And this is especially a great strategy where I get clients to say, hey, I'm in my 40s or maybe I'm even in my early to mid 50s. I, I want to retire before 59 and a half. That IRA is sitting there. If I want to touch it, I can't touch it till I'm 59 and a half. Or otherwise, I get slapped with a 10% 10 penalty anyways. So what do I do? Like, well, one way to offset those taxes, I mean, we can do things like conservation easements, you know, where we donate land, we can get a nice multiplier there. Or we can do an oil investment where, you take some of that money out of that IRA, yeah, you're going to be paying taxes. You're supposed to be paying taxes because it's income tax when you take the money out of your IRA, whenever that is, right? But at the same time, you're now writing off the same amount of money on your taxes. So it's a wash, right? Really, all it is, if it's before you're 59 and a half, 10% penalty. That's it. So you can get your IRA money without paying 40% plus in taxes. Maybe you pay 10%. You get, a, get in an oil investment where, yeah, by the second year, you'll start cash flowing a little bit, some of the profits. And then maybe about the fourth year or so, you get the money back with some returns, you know, and you might make decent returns. It's a growth play, not so much a cash flow play, but you get some good, good returns and you get that money back, say in like four years or so. And now you can invest that money for more cash flow and you can retire before you're 59 and a half, you know? So it's kind of a nice way to bypass a lot of the taxes legally, right? Just by doing something good. I, again, I always caution people because I had somebody listen to my show recently and they said, well, I got to find an oil investment. They found some random one that I don't know is any good. Sometimes they buy individual oil wells, which I think is highly risky. Um, I had one client, another one in Hawaii that he wanted only oil and gas investments, which is great, you know, because I'm not sold to any investment, right? right? I said, all right, fine. You know, I, I like real estate, but let's do the oil route. And the thing is he ended up buying three individual oil wells. One was doing great. One was okay. The other one was striking out, <laughs> you know? So he's taking all this risk. I'm like, no. There's an oil fund over here. You buy multiple oil wells, so you don't deal with all the hit or miss, the, either the home run hit or strikeout. There's, there's none of that. You get some pretty steady growth out of it. So go the safer route. Let's diversify your oil you know, wells that you're, you're investing into so that you're not you know, just trying to bet everything on black. In other words, it's sort of like diversifying a stock portfolio versus owning one stock and that's it. Exactly. That's exactly it. I got you. I got you. Well, now, based on your experience with your clients, on average, how long is a client consulting with you to, to, you know, get them to get their strategy in place and, you know, to get them on the path of their own goal? Yeah, that upfront, usually in that upfront process, like three to five months, depending on how in depth, how deep we go with it, you know? Okay. Um, and then after that, I just keep them going for life. You know, they, Obviously, that depending on how crazy things get and life changes, I want to make sure I'm always there in their court to guide them along that path. And again, like I just don't know people. There's just not financial guys out there that think like this. They don't think like, how do I do something that actually works, that actually creates real financial freedom and wealth? It's always like, hey, gamble in the market, 
hope it works out for you, you know, and, and that's kind of what it works. It's just, it's, it's a bunch of crap you're sold, you know, it's high risk, low returns. And to be able to say, no, there's a different way to do this. That's, you know, because that's why I had to leave. I couldn't be in integrity and be in that industry anymore and tell people, Hey, this is the answer. You're going to make it. Cause every time I ran real numbers, it depressed me. And if I showed them the numbers, it depressed them. They're like, wow, I'm going to be a millionaire living in poverty. That's not right. You know, like that's what the traditional mainstream financial advisor path does. I got you. Any other alternative financial uh, investments come to mind uh, that you'd like to share? You know, there's, there's all kinds you could do. I mean, like we mentioned real estate, we talk about syndications or funds where you can invest in, you know, where people do the investments, they pay you a certain return, right? Sometimes you have equity in it. Sometimes it's just a debt position. You know, one couple recently went into a debt position with a company where they're buying mortgage notes, you know, they're buying up the delinquent mortgage notes and they could try to do it themselves. But most people I talk to want the passive way, right? But the thing is on the active side, there's so many things you could do. I mean, I have people that are buy land and lease it. You know, I've got people that invest in businesses. You know, I've got people that create residual streams of income through different business means, whether it's, you know, like they're creating sales funnels on websites, right? It could be like, for example, I, I have one show I did last year where the guy actually shows people how to take your paid off credit card, get a, someone who's a, basically a, a, a authorized user on your card, but they can't access your card. They just become an authorized user, builds their credit, and they'll pay you for the use of that card. You know, not even using the card, just using that credit history of that one card on their credit report, right? And I've, I've had, I mean, even myself last year, I made about a thousand bucks doing that, just having people put them on a card that have paid off, that they pay me money so that they can have that little extra credit boost, you know, to help them get maybe a better interest rate on their car loans or their mortgages or whatever it might be. You know, there's, there's so many creative ways you can create cash flow, sometimes with no cash at all. Wow, amazing. Well, Chris, it's been fantastic to have you back on the show. And I know some of my audience is going to want to reach out to you and talk with you personally. So how can people reach out to you and what can they do? Get a strategy session with you or uh, how can they connect with you? Yeah, I definitely want a strategy session or something like that. Um, you can shoot me an email directly, chris at moneyripples.com. Just say you heard me on, on Jay's show here. And then, yeah, we can set up a time to do like a little, you know, consult to see kind of where you're at and how much hope there is in your situation, you know, that kind of thing. Or, and of course you mentioned this before too, you know, follow my show, the Chris Miles Money Show, which I've got 350 plus podcasts on there that have got just awesome information, just like Jay's show is. That's great. So again, that your email for people to reach out to you is chris at money ripples, M-O-N-E-Y-R-I-P-P-L-E-S, money ripples dot com they can also follow you and and to get that free strategy session uh, just mentioned they heard you on the jay connor show That's and right. uh, you'll give them a free strategy session and they can also follow you on the chris miles uh, podcast show that's correct you got it that's perfect chris thank you so much for joining me again here on the show hey it's been such an honor jay i really appreciate it always always have fun on your show thank you all right folks thank you for tuning in and as always we ask you to, if you are tuning in on iTunes, be sure to subscribe, rate, and review. And uh, if you're on Google Play, the same. You may be watching us on one of our YouTube channels or the other venues. So anyway, be sure and subscribe so you don't miss out. I'm Jay Connor, your host and the Private Money Authority, wishing you all the best. And here's to taking your business to the next level. We'll see you on the next show.